from Maryland as the director of the International Writing Program. It's my pleasure to introduce you and welcome you to our last uh, uh, panel of the Fall Residency 2022. This is a little bit of an unusual kind of panel. We call it Images of America. Ordinarily, the writers come uh, with beautifully written praises of their arguments, all of which can be found on our website, iwp.uiowa.edu, along with the writers' biographies and samples of their work. But for this one, we invite the writers to come up and speak off the cuff for one, two, three minutes uh, to give us some image of what their stay in America has been all about, what we imagine or what they imagine uh, they will take home with them. Ordinarily at these panel discussions, we, the, before I introduce the last writer, I tell you about upcoming events. I'll give you the upcoming events right now so that you have them all in hand as we turn it over to the writers. Later today at 5 o'clock, we'll have our final Shamba House reading featuring Edson Nkopte from Guinea-Bissau and Fatima Vilata from Nicaragua. Uh, we have three Cinematech events this weekend that we hope you'll consider attending. Tonight at 7 o'clock, Mohammed Nasruddin from Lebanon presents Capernaum in the Becker Communications Building, Room 101. Tomorrow night, Noah Susanna Murag from Israel will present Synonyms. And Sunday night, David Anwar from Mexico will present You're Killing Me, Susanna, both at 7 o'clock in the Adler Journalism Building, Room 105. On Sunday at 4 o'clock, come to our final reading at Prairie Lights Bookstore, where uh, Mohammed and Christina Dabrowska from Poland and David from Mexico will read from their work. That's at 4 o'clock. On Monday... At 11 a.m., David Anwar will be reading his Spanish translations of several of our writers here uh, at the at the Shamba House. On Tuesday, Matthias Gerdes, an IWP alum, and the distinguished poet Mary Jo Bang, both on faculty at Washington University, will talk about their creative writing PhD program at the Shamba House, uh, as well as read from their own work. And next Friday, though the writers will all be in New York, we will be hosting a Facebook event at 6 o'clock to celebrate World Creole Day uh, with uh, our alum, Baudelaine Pierre, uh, uh, curating about 10 to 12 writers uh, from Haiti, from the dia diaspora, reading in a combination of English, French, and Creole. So thank you until next autumn. And now I turn it over to the writers who come up at at their own uh, at their own rate and uh, their own order. And I should say this is always the complicated moment. Who's going to go first? Uh, uh, hi everyone. Hello. Thanks for having me. Um, what I saw: images of America. I would like to thank the International Writing Program for inviting me to participate. The traveling experience has enriched me so much. I had never traveled outside Africa until now. When I entered America, I knew I was on a different continent because so many things appeared, appeared different to me, like the skyscrapers and the, critical security, and the critical airport security checks in New York. I boarded a plane from Minneapolis to Cedar Rapids and being the only black man on board got me thinking for, for a while because that was my first time ever being in the midst of white people. I have not really experienced any culture shock, though perhaps because I was already somewhat familiar with American culture through the books I read, movies, music videos, and TV shows I watched, and what others said to me about America. I got really excited when I finally arrived in Iowa City because of the beauty, calmness, and orderliness I saw upon my arrival. I became more familiar with Iowa City during my daily walks to the Ilofofu restaurant to get my African food. It has been, it has been hard for me to adjust to American food, but the 30 or more minutes walk to and from the Iowa's, Iowa ho uh, House Hotel where, where I live gave me a chance to explore 
this beautiful city and to meet my other African brothers living here. From what I saw in Iowa City, I told some of my American friends that America is heaven, but some begged to differ. Chicago was also beautiful and very busy, but I still believe Iowa City is one of the best places in the world to live and have peace of mind, especially if you are a writer like me who enjoys tranquility. Another observation I have made is that the staff of the IWP are so helpful. Whenever I need support or guidance to do something, they are always available. They are friendly and open to conversations. I say a big thank you to you all. Many of my fellow writers here are also kind and generous. And I can say this confidently because they came to my aid when I contracted COVID. It was my first time contracting the virus, so I was a bit scared as the symptoms were showing on me. But the love they showed me reduced the panic. They brought me food and almost everything else I needed while I was in isolation. I sincerely thank every one of them. Overall, this visit to America has been a great experience for me. I have learned so much here, and I strongly believe that this experience will reflect in my subsequent works, enhance my career, and allow me to assess similar opportunities in the future. Thank you once again for selecting me to represent Ghana at this year's International Writers Program. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I did not know we had to prepare something like that, Waters. <laughs> now I'm like, can I just say thank you? <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. I think by now some of you already know my name. I'm Safina Dhanishalahi. Um, can I use this? Hello, hello. Okay, no. <laughs> Since I've come here, I've been doing two contradictory um, acts, one of which is uh, cooking and feeding people, and the second is dragging them to the gym to burn that off. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have been in the US in my teenage years, back and forth, um, a lot. So this is not my first time. But I'd like to quote my dear friend Zaza's African proverb. Um, we, were, we were brunching yesterday with Sherry, who left us for Barbados. Um, and, she, uh, and we were just discussing how that what we feel right now is sort of etched in time. Because the African proverb goes that you never cross the same river twice. I will only be this age in this phase of my life once. So whatever friendships and connections I've made here are going to be mine forever. And I just want to thank you all, people from the IWP program and the friendships I've made. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, hi. Um, okay, can you hear me? I have to like to, to lower down. Uh, my name is Yaya <laughs> uh, Ashur. Uh, I'm from Gaza City, Palestine. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you to all the IWB staff and all the participants in this year or this fall. Uh, Oh my God, <laughs> I, I, I know that the topic of, the, of this panel discussion is about images of America, and I have, uh, I have to say that the most thing I was like touched by or like spent most of my time uh, connecting with is making connections and uh, the willingness of Americans and people here to connect you with other people uh, this is very great, and this is like not usual. I know some of you might not agree, uh, and like many Americans might not agree with me, <laughs> but it's their willingness to make connections and connect you to the right people or the people that you need or the people can help that can help you. It's very, very great. 
Uh, so, but, but the negative side is that you receive so many emails and so many messages and like <laughs> you get overwhelmed. So, but yeah, I just wanted to say this because this is also my second time here. Um, and it's, and I made connections in the first time, but this time it was like, wow, huge. And like, <laughs> yeah. Um, the second thing, uh, like my image of America that I took is that America is really wide, <laughs> wide. And uh, there's a lot of space, a lot of grass, a lot of uh, empty spaces that you guys need to fill up somehow. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been so hard to get used to that and, uh, and overwhelming. But I always enjoyed sitting by Iowa River. And I always rem remember this river and I always and I will always miss it. So thank you so much for whoever decided to put us by the river, that, the, the Iowa House Hotel that we stayed in, uh, that I'm gonna miss, is by the river, and my room has a river view. So thank you so much. It's, I like water. I miss the beach in Gaza. I miss the Mediterranean Sea. But the river was like another experience. Uh, it's very calm, no waves, but like it's just like going flowing and that made me very calm uh, and I cried a lot there cried a lot in my room and this is what I want to say like people are gonna ask me what what was the most special thing you did in America my first time in Ohio I said I thought I thought a lot in America I changed my mind and I think this time I will say I cried a lot I, I needed to cry uh, because in Gaza it's very hard to cry because yeah, <laughs> it's very hard, but yeah, so <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I also want to add that uh, Sherry was so excited to, to join this panel and talk about something, and she, was, she, she intended to send me something to read for you, but in our conversations, she really wanted to say that you guys in America have too many signs on the streets, and it's hard to follow, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Mohammed Nasruddin from Lebanon, from Beirut. I was the last writer to join this program. And uh, what I uh, experienced in the American embassy of, uh, in the American embassy in Beirut, I had an idea that it will be very hard and bureaucratic in America. I was escaping the French system. I was living in France. There is a lot of paper. You have to prove that you are breathing and living in France. <laughs> and they did the same issue with me at the Amer But when I arrived here, uh, it's completely different. The first thing I look in any city is the sky. The empty spaces Yahya talked about, I think they are full of poetry at this country. Uh, America loves poetry. This is my impression. And this is very beautiful because today, everything in the world is like poetry is marginalized, okay? The youth generation that like poetry in America. This is very nice. How, the people, when we said, I'm a poet, how they look to you. This is wonderful, okay? Uh, the landscape. Because the spaces, the horizontal landscape in Iowa City, I like so much. I can look to the sky. This is in Tunisia also. When I was there, the sky was close to me. And I had the same feeling here. Uh, maybe Heraclitus he said we, we never cross the same river twice. Maybe we never, uh, we never look at the same sky twice also. Huh? Uh, the sky is wonderful, and uh, it's new every morning. So it's giving us hope and, uh, and faith. Thank you so much for the great people who uh, welcomed me. Uh, I int integrated quickly the group, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I will miss the wonderful friends. I will not name them one by one. <laughs> All of the people are wonderful here, and uh, thanks for IWP for this very great opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
I didn't know that I should prepare anything, but I will try to say a few things. From the moment I entered America, I felt... Uh, I'm sorry. My, everyone knows my name. My name is Marcel Oku. <laughs> I am from Benin, Benin, West Africa. From the moment I entered America, I felt home. I felt welcome. Do you know how a baby in, in, in Africa, how a baby feels when this baby is on the mother's back? They feel, they feel safe. This is the way I felt when I came in Africa. When I came in Africa, I want to cry, but I will not. I will not cry. I will not cry. I'm thinking about one person, Mr. Kang. He took. <laughs> <laughs> I, when Water was, Waters was, was talking, I was thinking about something that he used to tell me, Mr. Kang, he used to tell me, the way he took me, he took me like his son, he took me like his, his brother. The, really, I want to cry, but I will not. I will resist crying. I have come to, a, <laughs> I've come to love America. First, I was, and I assure you, if I was, were a woman, I would marry her. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the city is calm. It gives you um, the tranquility. It moves you from a noisy universe and puts you in a universe of creativity. You have calmness, and you have the freedom of writing. I don't know what that to say, but I am feeling sad to want to leave it, to leave um, to leave Iowa now. I will miss Iowa, of course, and I know that Iowa will miss me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I know Iowa will miss me. I met nice people, very nice people. Whoever I meet and whoever I talk to, they are very very nice. Seriously, and I love you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh -oh. I'm, I'm Mr. Gang. <laughs> yeah, my name is Kang Pyong Yung. Yeah. Two months ago, I told you like that. My name is Kang Pyong Yung. Kang is my family name. Pyong is meaningless. Yung has my identity. Please call me Jung, but still, that guy, <laughs> Mr. Gang, I told you right that I hate my father, so don't use my family name, but still, a lot of my mates call me Kang, or so, or professor, but I'm not professor here, I'm just Kang Byung Jung from South Korea, who lives in Slovenia who was jumping on the bed of Mohammed a few <laughs> hours ago after drinking a lot. <laughs> but actually, I prepared three kind of versions of this panel. The first version, it is impossible, I realize, because recording or very serious, I cannot use any F word at all, so delete. <laughs> second version, maybe fine. Uh, I already told this second version uh, I knew. Very hard to explain about the image of America you know, with my ability of English, even Korean. So I can say right that before I came here, America, America, means I slightly ignore American culture. And then last month, America. <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. You have a lot of stuff culturally. And then now, America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the first version. The second version is uh, more serious, as always. Uh, before I came here, so, yeah, uh, first of all, um, I'm Kang Byung Yung. I'm all, uh, 47 years old. I'm quite old. Uh, 20 years ago, I became a writer. And then since I became a writer, I had not written any poems 
at all. Very frankly speaking, I ignore poets. The poet just, you can write, right? But novel, you have to think about a lot. Make a plot. Yeah? Make a much, many sentences. And then, yeah, novelist can be richer. Poet, never. <laughs> Ever. Maybe forever. But anyway, yeah, since I came here, I started writing poems. <laughs> I checked just now before I came here, so uh, 52 poems I already wrote. <laughs> Not only in Korean, but also in English. For me, America is poetry. <laughs> Vietnam, they do not say I love you. Instead of that, they say today the moon is so bright. <laughs> For me, American moon is always bright. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Mohammed Khir from Egypt. I'm uh, 44 years old, single father. I will read this, I will read this uh, very quickly, I hope. Uh, before I came to America, I never imagined that the most activity I would be involved in would be acting. When my, when, 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 when my friends will ask me what I was doing in America, I will tell them I participated in one poetry reading and five plays. <laughs> it was very interesting and surprising, and I think the variety of uh, accommodation provided me was hard to find anywhere else outside of America. But not all surprises are good. Before, uh, before I came, I checked the hotel's website, and I liked the picture of this uh, big, beautiful room with a wonderful view of the river. The river. But when I entered my room, I found the view I have is just a wall in front of the window. I felt bad. I said to myself, oh my God, if you exist, why me? What is the river view that I saw in the picture? I also, I also felt more unfortunate when I couldn't show an Egyptian movie in the official program. But I found the uh, opportunity to borrow another Egyptian movie and screen it outside the official program. I also able to arrange a reading in Arabic with a lovely Arabic student, students in Iowa. Finally, also we ran a songwrite workshop and we actually produced some songs and that was great, especially from Joaquin. He has like a crazy mind. So uh, maybe they weren't uh, lying. America is a land of opportunity after all, even if you have a bad view in your room. <laughs> so so uh, our felt some bad luck in the beginning. So still, the best luck I ever had in my life is being chosen in, uh, to this program and meeting you all, my friends. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, I had this river view room. <laughs> I didn't do anything, you know. I just arrived and they put me there. Yeah, I even didn't. Maybe, 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 yeah, maybe. I changed a little bit after America. Yeah, and I also was the one who was in Muhammad's second room yesterday night till 4 a.m. And... <laughs> It's just like crazy, you know, partying like this, I don't know. Today I'm just, uh, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, so like, uh, it's not my first time in America. I've been here several times, but it's, I think, the best time, not just in America, it was just one of the best times, time of uh, my life. So yeah, uh, I'll start crying. <laughs> so what we were doing here, we were... Oh, sorry. <laughs> My name is Ainur Karim. I'm uh, from Kazakhstan. 
Yeah, so what we were doing here in America, we were like uh, cooking, eating, <laughs> farting, yogging, walking, hiking. And I put everything on my stories in Instagram, and finally someone asked me, but you are writers, when are you going to write, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but we also did some writing, and I also did uh, some writing, and uh, I'm not happy with it, you know. When I was, like, uh, flying here, and I had a lot of time, so I made, like, list of what I will do. Uh, uh, <laughs> not that much, to be honest, yeah. But uh, you see, like, a lot of things, they weren't in this list, but I, I've, I have experienced them, and it's... Lovely. I love you all. Thank you to our organizers. I know how it's difficult to organize, you know, something like this. It's a huge crowd of different people from everywhere. So it's like huge, huge, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of efforts. And I understand how it's difficult, you know, to provide everyone with <laughs> Riverside view. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, it just wasn't possible. So thank you. <laughs> thank you all. I love you guys. Thank you. So this is funny because um, I just started my writing just now, and I, my first line was, I don't have much to say. <laughs> and then I have like a lot of things that I wrote. <laughs> and when I've been here, yeah, of course, sorry. I also wrote that down, Chris. It says, David Anuar, Mexico, Yucatan Peninsula, Cancun, Merida. It's in here. So now it's, it's been said. Uh, so I, uh, there are so many things I would love to tell you, you know. Uh, but I will start reading you a poem. And it's in Spanish, and I'm sorry. Uh, I will read it in Spanish. And it's about the uh, United States. I always have problems saying America. I must start confessing that because America is a whole continent. Well, we should start remembering that. I'm also an American, by the way, uh, even though I live in Mexico. Uh, so for me, it's United States. Uh, of course, this is a political position. Uh, but, well, uh, Estados Unidos está lleno de ríos, lagos, lagunillas, pequeños cuerpos de agua, estanque de mirada oscura, piedra de azul mampostería, arroyo de dragado seco, inventada piscina para patos, mora azul de bañera ancha, bacteria otoñal sazonada de cloro y agua grifo, botellita de un dólar porque no conocemos nada mejor que el capitalismo, fuente de soda con miradora hacia el invierno, estatuilla de pene largo con erección a punto de llovizna, campos de maíz lavado de amarillo, el acuático amanecer de los letreros y las ninfas de cabello solar y hueso estrecho llevan sus botiquines de químico progreso, piscadoras de agua dictaminaron su pureza, imposible el nado, dice su reporte de Angélica Tonada, y con la tristeza del niño que ha visto morir su primer pescado, tiran de la cadena hasta romper en llanto. It's a poem about the water in the United States, because I love water, you know? Uh, so I will read you what I have uh, put in here. For me, it's difficult to speak from this experience because I'm still living it. I will need time and space to think about all I have lived and seen here. I must say Iowa was a very good and welcoming to me, at least for the six first weeks, when I enjoyed the sound of cicadas and the beauty of swimming in your pools and lakes. I love swimming, every single water body I found on my way. I even considered swimming in the Iowa River. Uh, <laughs> really, I really consider, was considering, I, I, even someone told me, yeah, there was a writer sometime that he went inside the Iowa River. And my friend here, she also, you, you, you swam there, right? Uh, Wendy. <laughs> Um, the last four weeks have been, oh, so the poem I wrote is about the body waters in America, United States. Uh, the last four weeks, uh, I mean, America sounds better, you know? Like, United States is not such a good name, but I, I know, of course. Uh, the last four weeks have been different, or, or, or more, yeah, different, because I have been struggling with cold weather and all sicknesses that have been knocking at my door, as Edgar Allan Poe says in The Raven. By the way, 
Thanks to all the fellow writers who have been taking care of me. Thanks for the food, for the medicine, and for your words. They are always uh, warming my heart. Uh, but there are two things that have been dazzling and breathtaking for me, rivers and autumn. Let me explain myself. Where I live, in the Yucatan Peninsula, we do not have rivers. Um, of course, I had seen rivers before in my life, but I have never been living such a long period of time in front of a river. Uh, I was kind of in the same situation as Mohammed. I didn't have like a river view, and after a month, I felt like I was dying there. In, 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 I, I was actually a neighbor, I think. Uh, so then I kind of said, please, I really need a river view, because if not, I will die here. And they really achieved to do it. And, and my, my, my last weeks here, I have had this beautiful river view. And it's been amazing. And I think I started believing God, you know? So yeah. <laughs> I even go to church on Sundays now. Really, really, I've been going to church, I promise you. Like a Lutheran church or something. It's very close to here. Uh, no, I think church on the river. On the river? No, no, no. It's not the party room, because the party room, that's also kind of church, you know? It's a little bit, we worship and that, but no. Um, well, rivers. Rivers was one of the things that, uh, one of the images of United States that will be in my heart. And the other one is uh, autumn, you know? Uh, where I come from, uh, trees are always green, all the year. We do not have seasons, you know? like. The trees are always the same. <laughs> and that's beautiful also. But for me, it was like very breathtaking to see how the trees started like changing their, their color. And then I hadn't never realized that the leaves also like, how do you say when they wither? That, that they really wither in, in, in the branches. For me, that was so new, you know, like seeing how these trees are dying. Of course, I know they are not dying, but, uh, but they are preparing themselves to, uh, for winter. So that was very impressive to me. Like, this has been the first autumn in my life. So thank you, Iowa, for giving me uh, this first autumn. Thank you for your rivers. Thank you for all the beautiful people I've been able to uh, meet here. Thank you to all my fellow writers. I really, really, really love you, and I really appreciate you. Uh, thanks to all the staff, and uh, I think that's it. Thank you all. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nana, and I'm from Georgia. Um, so my today's talk is not going to be as structured as previous talks, because um, as you know, we are leaving next week, and I already have this pre-departure anxiety about which I've been complaining already for a week, and I've managed to complain about it to my fellow writers too. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's how it goes with me. Um, yeah, I should confess that I don't like traveling, and I never travel unless I have to. To. But I've been traveling a lot lately because, well, I had to. And um, um, so it was very scary for me to come here uh, for this reason. And this was my first time in the US and this was my first flight alone. And I think I've overcome some fears uh, that are connected to traveling, but not all of them. But the first image that comes to my mind when I think of the U.S. is this uh, extreme sense of freedom that I've never had in my life. I, I don't know what it is connected to. Maybe uh, the way people are interacting with you, because uh, in my country, um, you don't ask a foreign person how they're is going, you don't say a phrase like that, hey, how's it going? It's an it's unimaginable thing. And um, here, once I came here, um, people can compliment you um, in the street and everyone, everyone can help you if you need something. And um, this uh, uh, sense of freedom is everywhere and this sense of belonging here. So I didn't feel as like it was a different culture to which I needed to ad adapt, um, which was great. But still, there were some things um, that 
have striken me. Uh, you, you have everything big and of a great amount. This concerns absolutely everything, portions in the restaurant and the things that are sold in grocery stores, um, uh, which was challenging, yeah, somehow, because sometimes I needed a small packaging of something and I couldn't find it because that there was no such thing. Um, um, yeah, overall, um, the I think Iowa City has become my home in a certain way, because when we had a trip to Chicago, um, I again had this pre-departure anxiety, and uh, once we were there, um, on the first night I was thinking that I want to go home, and then um, I suddenly realized that this image of home in my mind was not Tbilisi, my home city, but it was Iowa City, which was very strange. But still, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, I, I don't like traveling still, but uh, some, there's something that I even don't like more than traveling, which is endings, which make me <laughs> sad. So um, I'd like to thank you all this has been a wonderful opportunity, and uh, uh, I've met wonderful people, and I've had a wonderful time in Iowa. Thanks. I love you all. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Hien Chang. I come from Vietnam. So there was a night in Chicago when I walked along the shoreline of Lake Michigan, and then I met a, an, a very old man uh, who rides a bicycle, and he seemed to be a delivery man to me. And we, he asked me the direction to somewhere, which of course I, I didn't know, but then we talked a little bit, and at some point he recited a very long poem of Loka, which I never knew. And at that moment, I realized that, wow, this delivery man really knows more about literature than me. <laughs> uh, before I came to Iowa, I used to have like, a complex relationship with my identity as a writer. I was really ashamed of telling someone that I am a writer. It's like an inferiority complex. Uh, but then when I'm here, there was a day when uh, we went to the effigy mount, and I went hiking with Karim and, and, and Mohammed. And I remember, uh, because at that time, like we had walked for 10 kilometers, and all of us were very tired. And then Karim started to say, to, to refer this to, that situation to a novel of Stephen King, I think, um, a, no, a dystopian novel about uh, people having to walk, and if they stop, they, will, they would be shot down. <laughs> so that moment, I really feel like, no, I, I was not scared, but I, I feel like I belong to this community, a community of writers who can refer to literature in any situation. <laughs> and <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, so since I'm here, when I'm, when I'm surrounded by a lot of people who also write like me, who, and I see a lot of students and young people who dream to be a writer, where I can see literature not only in library or in bookstore, but also in a delivery man who can recite a poem locker, or sometimes a cat sitting on a pile of literature magazine. <laughs> uh, I've, I start to think that I have come to term up with my identity as being a writer. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I think I didn't plan to go, go uh, up here until Tsion showed up. Yeah, I know in the name. Uh, I guess my name even for now, will remain a mystery, you know, somehow, because I have my real name for paperwork, for Shelley, for bureaucratic papers. I have my pain name. It's really hard to pronounce. And everyone calls me Seven. So just remember Seven. I think that's enough. And I noticed the pattern that um, um, during every international camps, you know, something like this, um, the Africans and... Um, 
Americans, uh, South Americans were, you know, typically they will go come first, and boys always come first. And our shy, um, introvert Asians will always, you know, remain seated until, you know, there's something, yeah, I feel like I want to participate in this. Um, I know that I heard a saying that um, if you've been to a place for one week, you can write a book about it. For, I don't know, two months, you can write a short story about it. But when you stay there for 30 years, 30 years you will never become a writer. <laughs> you, you, won't, you won't write anything about it. So I really, actually, I really wonder, um, you know, what you guys will write about this place after you, you know, going back. Because I know writers are really good observers. I know we are, for, you know, everyone with such an identical personality, so different and background. I think that's just uh, amazing. Um, uh, it's not my first time in the USA, but um, if everything feels quite the same, and I really, really love Middle West. This is first time in Middle West. You know, the vibe here is different from Texas or New York or you know Alaska, but this is such a quiet place to to live. You know, to start a family, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, I still can remember, remember the, the first week, the first few days we arrived when Aiden, you know, leading us to, uh, the, the, the really pampered us. Thank you, Shelly, Aiden, everyone. And um, it feels me like, uh, wow, I'm back in freshman, freshman year, you know, like uh, the, or even high school, you know, this is really a mini kindergarten thing, you know. It's, it feels so young, but after a while, you know, we are, I when I observing those really young students in the campus, I, I noticed that um, there's just something different <laughs> from them already, you know. Uh, I had the same problem with uh, with town, actually, when I, back in China, you know, I guess maybe this applies to most of you. When they ask, what did you do? This is the really hard question. I would just improvise every time, and every time is different. You know, sometimes I say, yeah, teacher. I, I worked in the university back then. And sometimes I just, I don't know, you're you are cutting your hair, right? The barber asks, what do you do? I say, just sales, saleswoman. And then they would say, what did you sell? <laughs> I say, papers, maybe? <laughs> yeah, so, but in the vibe of the writers really helps, really helps to build, rebuild this identity as a writer, writer, not a spy of life, not the observer, not the uh, freelancer, you know, but writers. Um, another really interesting thing is that there are a lot of, a lot of reading going on. But, you know, in China, there's a... Um, there's no reading. I mean, reading the text is really, really strange, actually. The, of course, they are doing book tours or, you know, sales pro promotions. They will have um, presentations. You know, you are invited to talk about your books, but not reading. So I was confusing why if everyone is, is literate, right? And everyone can read by the text. So what's the point of reading it aloud? And I... Then I guess maybe this connects to the identity as a writer, that the most important thing is your work. And by through the reading it out, you can, I don't know, bridge something really close to each other, to the, to the uh, readers and everyone presented here. So there's another new thing I noticed in here. And I uh, really, really appreciate this opportunity, especially my room is with the one with the river view. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. Yeah. Love you guys. Hi, uh, my name is Nagayuki, so uh, from Japan. So I'm a poet, so that's why I made a poem this morning. So, you know, so my translation into English is so bad. <laughs> so English is a little bit so strange, but so 
just and and more. So I made it just forty minutes. So not to so ask, so not to say, oh, this is not good. <laughs> okay. So the title is Image of America. America, a phantom of illusion that trembles at appearance. It is not you we love. It's the people who sleep and wake up each day and live their daily life. Each landscape they quietly shape and tenderly warming. They tint your gestures ever more beautifully and let us, your neighbors, with our respective angles of anxiety, turn back into the inside of a smile. So it's not you, trembling with stoutness, America of appearances, representing you, the tiny fragments of individual lives, the slenderness of their arms, make your form strong and bring your name toward lightness. That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it forms means so uh, we love not America, but you people of America, especially Iowa. <laughs> 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 Hi, my name is Mashiul Alam. I am from Bangladesh, a very densely populated country, and a city, Dhaka city, very crowded country. And when I arrived in Iowa City, the next day I saw that, oh, it is a gift. It is a present for me because it is so quiet, calm, uh, the opposite of Dhaka. And when we started walking around the city, we all the time walked. We didn't need to get in a bus or something like that. While, while walking in the streets, I saw people, unknown people, looking at us and smiling and saying hi. <laughs> this, is, this is something new for me. <laughs> I liked it very much. And the IWP, I thought that this is a kind of job employments of some people like Chris, Natasha, Shelley, Hugh, they do their jobs from 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock like that. But what I saw that, no, this is not an employment like that, a job like that. But there I saw, I found them totally preoccupied with us. And as if they are always thinking about us, what to do, what should we do, what, what, what all the events, all the, everything is, I, I felt that they, they have nothing else to do without us. <laughs> <laughs> and and Shelly, Shelly, uh, we, had, we, we have a common room in, in the Iowa House Hotel, a common room, and there is a printer, computer printer, I came to know that this is Shelley's personal printer. She put it here. And in Wednesdays, days, when we cook in the kitchen, old big building, Shelley sends or brings herself her grandmother's pot. This is not an employment. This is not a job. Yeah. So I liked, I, th I, I, I am so fortunate, so privileged to, to be here to be invited here that this is, this is something, something extraordinary in my life. And, um, you know, I was thinking about uh, this, this, uh, this uh, panel, what will I say about America, the imp my impression about America. 
I was, I came to America for the first time in 2005 as a journalist in the journalist program for three weeks. And it was a very hectic program, three weeks breathlessly going to places, to cities from, it started from uh, Washington DC, then, from, uh, then to Michigan, Detroit, then to New York City, then uh, Seattle, then again Washington DC. And I forgot everything. I didn't remember anything when I came back to Bangladesh. <laughs> so, so many events, so many. And this time, this time, this is what I love, so calm, so quiet, so uh, I can do anything I like. And, uh, and initially I, I had a plan to finish a novel of mine, uh, which I am working on for several years. I think, I thought that I'll get some time here and I'll try to finish it. But I thought, why? It, it will be stupidity to sit in my room and write these things and what, it, every moment, I'll be losing if I sit in my room. That is why I, I didn't work at all. <laughs> I didn't work at all. And I sometimes, I, I, I loved very much to walk on the banks of the Iowa River. And I loved it so much that, you know, there, there is no river in, 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 in my city. There is a river, Buriganga in Dhaka. It is so polluted. <laughs> It is so contaminated with the, uh, with the waste, waste of industrial waste, household waste, everything. Even you, you can touch, you cannot touch the water. <laughs> yeah. No fish, no, no, animal, no um, uh, water uh, insects in, 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 cannot live in this water. And here I see a river so beautiful with no waves. Uh, most of the times, and it 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 it, it lies like a, like a pond in my in my country, and the reflections of the trees on its water it is picture picture skew. I I took a lot of pictures, and what I was uh, the the last last two days, two nights. I was suffering from acute insomnia. I could not sleep at all. And I was thinking, I have a problem with my sleep, but not that acute. But I, I was thinking, why? Why this is so? I, I, I slept well when I was here a few days ago. And uh, maybe it is time to leave this place to go back to my crowded city, and I'll be missing so much. And also, the days we are here with my friends, my colleagues, writers, they are like my brothers and sis sisters. I'll be missing so much that I cannot say, I, maybe I will not see each other again in, my, in our life. And so this is, a, this is a very difficult, very hard feeling. And um, last night I, I wrote a short Facebook post where I told that I was standing on the eastern bank of the Iowa uh, River in the afternoon and evening, looking at the western bank, the trees, and the sun was setting, and I saw like an hallucination in my, in my, my uh, insomnia that a, a green train is going fast from, from uh, south to north on the other bank of the river. And the cars of the train, like days, the time is going so fast, and I am trying to stop the train. Please, time, stop some, some days more, so that I can stay here some more days. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Zhu uh, Hezhi, uh, also known as Claudio. I'm from Taiwan. Uh, actually, my English is very lousy. Every time people say, oh, your English is very wonderful, I prepare it uh, for lots of times. And actually, I never understand what you are talking about. <laughs> 
especially for the reading. Seven uh, mentioned, uh, I, I, I can't uh, understand why American people love reading here, <laughs> neither. Uh, IWP is very, very famous in Taiwan. Uh, one of the reasons is the founder, co-founder, uh, Ni Hualing, uh, was from Taiwan. And uh, so every friend here, uh, when I announced I'm going to IWP, they was, wow, you now your big name now. <laughs> and, and they say, what were you doing, IWP? I have no idea. So I asked three friends, whoever, uh, three writers, whoever been here. The first one is a very famous writer, Luo Yijun, and uh, who speaks no English. The only sentence he can say is, I don't speak English. <laughs> So he felt deep, depressed here for two months, three months, there is more, uh, longer. Uh, and the uh, uh, only thing he did is smoke on the riverside, uh, sitting on a chair and smoke every day. And the second one is another famous writer whose name is uh, uh, Tong Wei Ge. He said, only thing he told me is to bring a light, uh, a light in your room or you will be uh, turned blind. Uh, since the light is very weak. Uh, and uh, the, the third one, uh, Huang Chongkai told me that, oh, IW is just like an uh, endless literature meeting in three months. Everyone was busy. Everyone uh, will, will participate in every event in the beginning, but they, they start to escape. Uh, <laughs> in the middle of that. And uh, so I learned that. I escaped and uh, skipped some <laughs> reading since uh, uh, one month later. And uh, uh, that's one thing I never want to do after I come here. I told myself I will never go to China Star. <laughs> because why should I eat Chinese food here? Yes, but I finally I went there about ten times, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know uh, there, there's a uh, uh, how to use chopstick print on the uh, paper bag. I try to follow the order, and I find I cannot use chopstick. <laughs> That's one thing I learned here, and uh, some of. Uh, my uh, writer friends and uh, we visit uh, a place called the uh, Auckland Cemetery. It's a graveyard nearby here. We visit the tomb of Mr. Paul Engel. And uh, uh, I think uh, the, it's weird to say I love graveyard in the States, <laughs> but I really love the, 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 uh, the, the environment of graveyard is quite different with in Taiwan. It's bright, it's uh, comfortable, and uh, it's, it's a place to make you think about life. And the little things bother you in your daily life, such as let's every, uh, I think half of uh, writers as me have a bad view of the uh, house, and uh, it doesn't matter anymore when you're walking around the graveyard. And I stand in front of the tomb of Mr. Paul Engel, and the Nia Hualing is already on, on the uh, tombstone. And uh, uh, in the, uh, behind, in the back of the tombstone is a, a poem from Paul Engel. It says, I can't move the mountain, but I made light. I can make light. I share this, and this poem with you. And uh, I say something to Mr. Poengo. I say, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Poengo, Mr. Engel. You, will, you, you, will, you, you cannot imagine that after you pass away 31 years, they, uh, there will be a person stand in front of your tomb and uh, feel of thankful feeling uh, to you because of, because of you and uh, Hua Ling. That's why we are here together to meet each other. And uh, um, the, uh, the other uh, thing that made me uh, remember all my life is the twilight here. Uh, since I'm from a tropical 
or subtropical country, we have very short twilight. Uh, it changes every minute. It's beautiful, but it's always changing. But here, the twilight zone is about one and a half hour, even two hours, and I sit down by the riverside, and see, it's just like forever. So uh, the first week, one day I sit by the riverside and cry for one and a half hours, just, uh, yeah, <laughs> for, for the beauty of the life, for the beauty of the nature, and it, it released some, uh, some dark, dark things inside my mind. And I, I never cried after that. <laughs> I, and I think my, the shape of my spirit changed here. Since I got email every day to, to tell me, oh, there's more events, there are new events. <laughs> and I learned to ignore all the emails <laughs> and all the information in the group. And, uh, um, but it still changed my, I, I think the shape of my spirit changed. And I, never, I, I just like a, a, a professor, I, I, I do nothing uh, about my work here. <laughs> I write nothing. But when I uh, look up my uh, draft of my novel, I, I have totally different eye to, to like, look into that and to find the way to fix it, to, to rewrite it. I will start uh, right after I will go back to Taiwan. And I think, uh, yes, I meet the people here. And uh, I fall in love with Iowa. And I will remember here all my life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joaquin Ortega from Venezuela. I will try to keep maybe two minutes or three minutes about this. So I make this checklist about the, all the things that I, that I have to say about my American experience. So I was uh, making this kind of, 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 smash, of kind of mashup between reality and, and fiction. So I made this list about all, all the characters that I have, I, by, I can remember, and maybe sometimes with a, with a Google <laughs> assistance, uh, about the people who, who were born in, in Iowa. And I, I make this short list, so, uh, especially John Wayne, um, my hero from the, the Walking Dead, uh, Michonne, Danai Guerrera, he, he was born here, Donna Reed, uh, the President Herbert Hoover, Grant Wood from, from American Gothic, the great Johnny Carson, Simon Estes, a great singer, opera singer. So one of my favorite bands, Slipknot, Corey Taylor, and another guitarist from The Killers, uh, Dave Kanon. Uh, from a series from the 70s, uh, MASH, the, this character, Radar, um, the, one of the Superman, Brandon Ruth, uh, uh, 70 shows, Aston Kutcher, Elijah Wood from, from l l so many movies. Uh, this, guy's from, this guy from this character from Marvel, Clint Barton, Hawkeye from the Avengers. Um, I think I, 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 I mentioned Aston Kutcher. Ah, Rob, Ron Burgundy, the Ancient Man, what a, what a great character, a comedy character. And of course, two, two of my favorites, uh, characters in, in, in the world. It's James T. Kirk from, from uh, The Enterprise and also Miss Piggy from The Muppets. So uh, after that, I, I have to I make this checklist about what I, what I found here, especially, I think we all agree on this, uh, about the smiles and the skies. I, say, I think it's the same thing. So the, the blue uh, of the skies, it's, it's, it's a city of blue, but not blues. Um, I also um, feel the, the smell of the green uh, in the morning, maybe something like lavender in the beautiful, day, beautiful days. So I, I have another uh, reconnection with my, with my, with the, I think in the spirit because we, I, I, I became, I, I will go to the mass, I go to the synagogue for the first time. Also, uh, I have some time to pray. So, in another order, I will, we will not explore about that. So, the kindness of nurses and all the all the support of my friends at ER, <laughs> ER without George without George Clooney. <laughs> so, uh, I I kept in my heart the voices of my colleagues, um, especially in, in when we have to when we go to another 
places of the United States, especially Chicago, beer stadiums and hot dogs, I think is a holy trinity of America. So um, the landscapes and also um, I love so, so much pork. I love Miss Piggy, but I love pork more. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, but also I think um, in this very time, I don't know where I came from. I think I'm from your hearts too. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone. I honestly didn't think I will say anything, but I will say something short. Um, my name is Noah, and I come from Israel. And when when I thought about this uh, sort of assignment about what did we see in America, so uh, uh, other than seeing a lot of Dunkin' Donuts, which is my notorious, uh, I really love that place, and we don't have it back home where I come from. So um, I kept thinking of this city, and uh, there is something about the really like all the grass and the big sky and it felt like a like a blank space in which we were all invited here to like all the writers to meet each other in a way that is so intense like you bring this group of people and you put them in a hotel and uh, this I, I thought about this a lot like I will never have this opportunity again to be a part of such a group such a big group and so diverse this will never happen again I can sign on it And I come of, from a very uh, weird family. I, uh, I have, it's just me and my parents, and my mother is 18 years older than my father, which is the reason why I have no siblings, unfortunately. And I really, like, all my life it has been very sad for me. I always wanted siblings. I, I envy people with si siblings. And the way in which we live in the hotel is kind of like an insane, like a... Like a home, you sh I, I kind of have this feeling of having brothers and sisters, like sitting in our rooms in the hotel. I don't know. This is very, very special to me. I really don't know how to even start to describe how I feel about all of you guys. And uh, I, I, I kind of knew that I will make very significant friendships out here, but I, I never thought it would be so significant and so I will feel so much love so thank you I what I saw in America is basically the writers my colleagues here in this program I really truly love you guys and I hope that I will see you again in the near future or I don't know I just hope that to keep you all in my life forever thank you Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Aza Muchemwa. I'm from Zimbabwe. Um, it took me 22 hours and 36 minutes to get here to Iowa City. And in those 22 hours, uh, 36 minutes, I sort of had an uh, existential crisis. Um, I started asking myself, okay, this is a prestigious program that you're going to. A lot of Zimbabweans have gone to this program and they've truly benefited from this program. It's, it's a world-renowned program. But are you sure 22 hours <laughs> to go to a place that you've never been uh, and it's in the U.S. with all its beauty but also its own uh, complexities? Um, So when I got, uh, when, I, when I arrived, I arrived in Chicago first, um, and then at the airport, the people were so helpful, I was like, wait a minute, this is not what I expected, because I, I was trying to find um, the terminal where I was supposed to go get the train to go to my connecting flight, and there were just people who were like, which terminal are you? You can go this way. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, this is the U.S., Okay. Um, then I arrived at uh, Cedar Rapids Airport, um, and in all its uh, size, I thought, oh my goodness, I came to a really small place, because from Chicago, with its teeming uh, masses and its uh, large building, and then to this uh, almost one singular um, small building, and outside is bright and sunny, but you don't see much uh, for, for ages. Um, So I, I thought to myself, okay, in terms of a place where I can reflect uh, in terms of my writing, meeting people and wonder about writing, I guess it's good that I'm in this small place. Uh, I go to the hotel and I was the first one here. Uh, we actually joked that I'm the wise woman of this group because I, be, I was here like three days before everyone else came. Um, 
yeah, so I thought, well, this is actually good. I'm probably just going to be in this small place where I'm just uh, uh, interacting with the staff, with the writers, and maybe a few people. But I didn't realize that there's so much life in this city. Um, there's so much in terms of uh, what one can do. And the people here are really friendly, polite, and helpful. Some of them even opened up their homes, like my good friend here, Wendy, um, to invite us into their lives so for us also to understand uh, what it means to live here. Um, one of the things that I love about my experience is that I got to do a lot of dancing. I love dancing. Uh, yeah, uh, with my fellow writers. <laughs> and back home, I had stopped going uh, dancing because I wasn't finding any places that were safe for a person my age where I could dance freely. I remember one time recently we went to Studio 13, woo, <laughs> and we danced endlessly. And for me, that was the most freeing experience ever. I've never danced so, so freely and enjoyed myself so well uh, like in, in, in that uh, night. Um, and I, what I also find interesting about uh, Iowa City is the science that everyone is talking about, how everywhere you're going, you have the murals, you also have, uh, you also have signs in the shops that talks about different issues and also kind of uh, um, making statements. And I've at first, I, I wondered about what the significance of the signs were and what were the, their purpose were. And it, even up to now, I'm still processing that. But I felt like um, recently that the signs are not just about saying in terms of Black Lives Matter, uh, we are supporting Black Lives here in Iowa City, but it's also kind of like signaling to people who are out there that this city is a safe space for people of all races, and I really found that really incredible. Anyway, I also was hoping to actually finish a play that I was uh, working on uh, since last year, rounding up. <laughs> uh, I didn't uh, finish that play, I didn't touch that play at all, but I did a lot of writing. I did a lot of writing for the panels, for presentations, and I also wrote a short play in this city, and because of everything that I've been inspired by in terms of daytime activities and nighttime activities and also even the people that I've, that I've been meeting, meeting people will be like, I love your shirt. Or someone who comes up close to me and says, I love your hair. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thank you very much. I really enjoy myself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Edson. I'm from Guinea-Bissau. Thank you. Thank you very much. The first thing that I want to say is thank you. Thank you, IWP, in all stuff. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Shelly. I done all stuff of IWP. Thank you for this wonderful experience. Thank you for my friends and brothers, writers, for this wonderful experience. Uh, I think I learned a lot with, the, with you, with your experience. And this is very, very, very hard for me. OK. Uh, I don't know the, if I can talk about uh, my impression of all America, of, of all of America. I can wrong <laughs> doing this, but uh, maybe you you can say if Iowa can represent all America, but because I just can say something uh, about uh, Iowa, you know, uh, I saw um, a city where education, literature, and culture influence a lot uh, people our people's lives. Uh, the calm of the city is also felt in the people. I don't know if it's the city doing people or people doing the city. Maybe it's something interdependent, you know. Maybe people doing the city and city doing the, the, the people. People on the street look you in the eyes 
in our eyes when we speak with you and have time to greet you and give you some information or help. This is for me, uh, um, is, um, it's very important when you speak with me, if you can see uh, to my eyes. Uh, for me, the time is the, the most important thing in life. If you give me time, uh, this is uh, very, very, very important. And uh, I think in Iowa, people can give you time. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you again. Thank you uh, all. Thank you, Iowa, especially for the time. Here, uh, I imagine to write uh, my first, my two first novels. So I think this is very, very, very good for, for, for me. I leave this city with the feeling uh, of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Hello, uh, I am Chun Shu. I come from China, Beijing, but now I'm living in Berlin, Germany. Um, I spent my very uh, wonderly teenage in in Beijing, and uh, uh, when I moved to Berlin uh, at twenty fifty. Uh, I felt very lonely. That time, it's so difficult to find some uh, writers and points, you know, as your company, and you, I didn't have enough chance, chance, chance to to talk, to talk uh, books, uh, talk uh, uh, poems. I met some friends in Berlin, but they almost they are almost uh, artists. You know, Berlin, uh, it, they have, they has a lot of museums and very good, uh, classic music. But uh, now uh, there's no space for, for Chinese literature. Uh, maybe only a tiny space. And, uh, I did know, I didn't know how to, uh, join in. And, uh, here's a chance. I, I had a chance to be here, and here I met some, um, you know, our IWP friends, uh, writers, uh, point, and uh, um, it just like uh, my teenage uh, come again. Uh, I have uh, my second uh, chance. Uh, okay, uh, I didn't talk a lot of literature with, with them because I think have fun is most uh, important. So we went, uh, okay, we had a lot of fun actually because I, I, I'm very interested about relationships, uh, different people's relationships. And uh, I think I, I always uh, have passion to try by myself. I, <laughs> I, I jump, I jumped first. Um, I really like Iowa City, um, but I know here it's not all American. Here's a university city, yes? Uh, when, when, they, when they live here, we, we, we come to another city, the, the feelings is very different. I went to Iowa City Animal Care Adoption Center. I really like I really like there. I I, I bought a T-shirt. Uh, okay, I I I I, I attached cats, uh, but here's a window. So I really hope one day I can I can honk honk them without window, and. Uh, uh, and uh, another uh, thing is, uh, the waiters is always very hurry. They they are waiting waiting for you pay. Yes, in in, in the restaurant, is that right? <laughs> because in 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 China and in Berlin, um, they they are very slowly for that. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, but but the people here they are very friendly, uh, especially compared to Germany because <laughs> they are very very seriously and they they are never smell to you, um, <laughs> and if they are smell, you have to pay, you know. Uh, uh, the time is so quickly, so fast. Everything's just like a dream, even now. And uh, um, mm, I lost my mind. Okay, thank you, IWP. Thank you, uh, thank you, University of Iowa. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I hope one day we can meet again. Okay, thank you. We partied a lot yesterday, and I think everybody who, who took part at the party uh, was like, today we won't speak, but everybody spoke. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the, I'm from Germany. I'm Tunai Önder from Germany. And, um, uh, you know, I, when I came here, I was, like, really a little bit excited because of one thing, because I'm like, oh, my God, I'm representing Germany because I'm one of these, those fake Germans. So since I'm here, I really feel, I really feel um, um, how do you say, versöhnt. Reconciled with Germany. I really think it's good. I'm representing it very good. I'm a very good German speaking person. <laughs> so it really helped me, you know, to integrate in my, in my own uh, country in Germany. So thank you for this. And what I'm taking, um, what um, picture of America, um, I think that um, one very little thing I really loved in Iowa. It's um, these water fountains everywhere. You can, you can just drink everywhere this water. It's really so essential. I love this, really. Thank you for this culture. It's just great, really. I really mean it serious. Sorry? They're very low and very high for every, uh, you know, uh, big person, small persons. It's just great. So, and then... <laughs> The second thing, uh, I think this uh, IWP program, the interesting thing is that you, you nearly don't meet any Americans. I mean, you meet ho the whole world here, and that's so great. I, I mean, the whole world is here, and, and um, I, I take the world with me uh, to Germany, I think, and um, I, I, will take, I will take a lot of different and lovely um, ways of uh, speaking English with me. All these dialects from Yuki, Mohammed, this Arab, this Zazas, Mashuls, all this different Hebrew, you know, there are so different ways of uh, speaking English and that's what I will take to Germany. I just love this. And it's easier for me to understand all you from the other parts of the world than the people here. Their English, I did not, uh, I really, I'm, I'm really doing hard to, to, to talk with the Ayavan people than from the people from the other world. So yeah, thank you very much. I, I'm just yeah, taking you in my heart. <laughs> See you soon again. I want to go for lunch uh, <laughs> like I do. Um, as a um, beginning translator some 20 something years ago, I, um, it was before the internet was uh, widespread and I had to wait in line at my faculty or pay a lot of money in internet cafes to look up um, facts that I was translating. The, you know, uh, the internet wasn't full of pictures of uh, animals and flowers like it is today, and you had to rely as a translator on paper encyclopedias and libraries and uh, consultations with experts. So for me, the biggest, it sounds weird, I know, but the, the, most, the biggest impression is actually seeing the animals that I knew from books 
chipmunks, <laughs> blue jays, uh, what else? The squirrels, yeah, they, they look similar. Uh, what? Deer. Oh, the, I know deer from my country. That's, that's not a problem. But all these things that were like... Uh, yeah, Canadian geese, yeah, yeah. They have a name in my language, but they're not widespread. <laughs> but uh, all, those, all those animals were just uh, um, like characters in the books. And now I go along streets and I see chipmunks filling their faces with acorns. And um, I know it is, again, I, I'm, I'm repeating it, it's weird. And, uh, but it's, it's the biggest thing that will stay with me, seeing my literature heroes um, in real life. And my name is Pavla and I come from the Czech Republic. <laughs> For the staff of the IWP, this panel is always enlightening and illuminating. And I do wonder if all the discussion of water has anything to do with hangovers. But uh, <laughs> and I, I, I'll tell the writers that fortunately, there's only one more year at the Iowa House. After that, the Iowa House is going to be turned into something else. So there will never be another battle over Riverview rooms. Uh, we'll be in a hotel somewhere. But what I, what, I, what I most want to say is how very grateful I am for, for all of you who came here with open hearts and the courage to be among 33 writers from almost as many countries in this, let's say, 11-week-long discussion, a conversation that has, I hope, been as productive for all of you and as enriching for all of you as it has been for us. And we look forward to, we still have another week to go, and we'll have more conversation along the way. But... Thank you.